In the name of God, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. Amen. I am so glad to be with you all virtually and later in our coffee hours together. And I am so glad to be with you all with these auspicious readings for today. Our lesson, our first lesson from Genesis, is a lesson that often sticks in people's minds. This idea of this woman who comes from Adam's rib. I invite you for a moment to feel around. Where are your ribs? Maybe in your family, you count each other's ribs. It tickles sometimes. But can a rib make a person? Maybe. Our lesson is part of two creation stories. So in Genesis, we have two creation stories and we have four authors. They're known as J, E, D, and P. Many of you know this, but what we understand about this multi-authors is that these are people telling the stories of who is God and who are we in relationship to God. And in this moment, <clears throat> Adam doesn't quite take ownership for his choices. And Eve brings them into a freedom of choice, the freedom of will. The author is working out how can we have a God who is all-knowing and a people who have this freedom of will to walk about and make mistakes. And then we hear in our gospel lesson this moment about the Holy Spirit. Jesus and his disciples have become so popular in the Gospel of Mark. They've been moving about, and Mark moves really quickly along in this story. Mark's aim is really to get to the cross. And he and his disciples are so popular, they have to get on a boat to move away. And right before this lesson, Jesus has named, these are my disciples. And we hear at the beginning, these disciples, these apostles, are now his family. In a time where kinship was lineage, direct lines, before they had ancestry and 23andMe, they had a knowledge of who we are and who we're connected to. And Jesus throws that upside down. The connection is our commitment to walking to, with each other in community, of committing to show up for what we value most. And so there's a person outside, right as they're about to eat, who probably has mental illness, and they go to restrain him. And there's this hubbub about who is God, what are the laws, can we heal on the Sabbath in the synagogue? And Jesus speaks of the Holy Spirit. In a gospel lesson, in a gospel book that focuses on the cross, it's important to note that Mark is very careful with what he shares. And Jesus says, you can blaspheme many things, but not the Holy Spirit. And I love the way these readings are connected today, whether it was with intention or not. This freedom of will, this freedom of choice to be out of the garden in the world, which is complicated and beautiful and challenging, and add on that a pandemic. And add on that a leadership change at your church. And Jesus comes to us today and says, the winds of the Holy Spirit are blowing through. We don't know where all of this is leading, but we do know we are showing up for each other in community. Whether we are watching online nearby or afar, whether we are watching online on Sunday morning or Monday evening, we are showing up together. We are invited to be open to where the Holy Spirit is guiding us and know that we are not physically present, 
but we are spiritually connected. So I invite you to go back to feeling those ribs, because I'm not sure they can make a human, but I invite us to take a breath, to feel those ribs expand, the breath of God breathing in through us, out through us, into our families of origin, our families of choice, and our community and our larger world. May we remember we are connected and that the Holy Spirit blows through us, sometimes softly and sometimes in gusts of wind, but always present. Amen. <laughs>